Major Slack videos. Yo, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back and welcome to part three of my Frost Bleed speed build. This episode is called Blood Brothers. Why? All will be revealed before the end of the video. For now, this is what you need to do next in this build. First thing we're going to do is buy a scimitar. The one thing that daggers are poor at is guard counter. And um, where we're going next, we need to do may potentially need to do some guard counters. So let's just buy a cheap sword scimitar here at the round table. And we're going to slap the sacred blade on it because it's going to be skeletons at this location. The death touched catacombs. That's where we're going next. So off to the third church of America so we can get the sacred blade ash of war. Here's your scimitar, it's got a nice reach on it, it's got a good ca guard counter. I'm not gonna upgrade it. Just gonna ride up the hill here, find the teardrop scarab. Get behind it so it doesn't see you coming. Like up here near the spirit spring. Get into sneak mode. Get right up close and do a charge attack. Whammo! And there's your Ash Before Sacred Blade. I'm going to slap that on the scimitar and go take on Death Touch Catacombs. We can start everything off from the Warmaster Shack. Okay, there we go. Sacred Affinity, Sacred Blade. That's what it looks like. It will instantly kill skeletons in death touched catacombs. Also, your blade's gonna be like glowing bright yellow for about, uh, I believe it's 40 seconds, 45 seconds. And any skeleton you kill while the blade is glowing bright like that will also be instantly killed. We are going to Death Touch Catacombs to get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. That's a talisman. Every time you make a kill, doing a critical hit, you recover health. This is absolutely perfect for a bandit who's running around assassinating everybody. Alright? Alright, let's, let's make this quick and painless. We are just after the boss fight. Sacred Blade is rather an expensive skill, so you want to set your um, flasks heavy on the FP side. Here's the boss door. We're just going to make our way down to the lever. One thing that we could collect on the way is the Uji Katana, which is the Samurai's default weapon. It also has bleed on it, so might be a nice addition to this build. Okay, so just follow my route here, whack all these skeletons. I like the way that guy's scratching his head. That's funny. Okay, and there's a little skinny route down here. I'm gonna go down there in a second. Just wanna go around the corner here and take care of the bow. The archer rather. Okay, there's his guard, and here's the archer. Whack him. Grab the glaive, grave glover, and find a skinny passage on the left down here. A couple of skeletons at the end. As soon as you grab this grave glover, grab that. Whack these guys. If you don't want to buy this scimitar, you could get away with putting the sacred blade on the great knife, but like I said, it has a poor reach. So if you get get this situation where, you know, you have to do a guard counter, you're gonna you're gonna run into trouble. And as I was talking there, I just quickly grabbed the Uchi Katana, like I said, this is Samurai's default weapon. Also has bleed on it. 
Pretty good bleed on it too. Okay, so here's the boss lever door. All the rest of these skeletons that I'm just gonna run by. They're not really worth that much. On the way in, I was just kind of like clearing out a lot of them just so that like when you get to the end to the boss door, you're not like faced with this absolute platoon of skeletons coming at you, which can be pretty hellacious. So that's the only reason I cleared them out. Otherwise, you know, you could speed right in and speed right out. I've done that before. All right, so back to the set of grace to like, you know, powder our nose and refill our flasks. And now we're going to take on the boss fight. This is best done with our default setup, the Reduvia in the right hand and the Great Knife in the left. And basically we're just going to cast out our wolves and shoot out Bloodblade when the boss is fully engaged. I'll go the wolves, drink some blue juice, refill your FP, and just wait. Wait for the wolves to fully engage this guy, the Black Knight Assassin. And I said these guys, this guy, I believe this is a female assassin. So, wait for the wolves to engage her. My bad. There you go. Hit and run. Blood blade, roll away. Because she will come after you. There you go. That's all there is to it. Okay, so we got the Assassin's Crimson Dagger restores FP, or rather, restores health every time you do a critical hit. Incredibly useful. Incredibly useful to any build. It's one of the first things I go after. Because I employ a lot of stealth in all my builds. Every single build I create, I employ a good deal of stealth. It's just the easiest way to go about things a lot of the times. Alright, so back to Agio Lake South, and we're going to start pushing into the Weeping Peninsula. Some very important items are going to get down there. And I'm going to take a different approach to the Bridge of Sacrifice this time. Usually I just go blasting right through. What you want to do to start off with is gallop straight down, straight down the road, right in the middle. And the guy with the ballista off in the distance is going to shoot right over your head, so don't worry about it. And then I'm going to show you some strategies with dual wielding daggers. I'm going to get off my horse right here and then double back. Any enemy with a shield, just lock on and wait for him to make a big move. Wait for it. That's not a big move. but. When he does make a move, he leaves himself open, you notice, with the shield. I just went for it there because, um, you know, I felt pretty confident, but normally I wait for him to make a big move. So he's got his shield up, so don't do anything. He's going to block your blood blade. He's going to block your daggers. Wait for it. That's not a big move. Wait for them to make a big move. Nope. Keep backing away. Keep backing away. Here, I'm just harassing him. There's the big move. And then right after that, see he has a long recovery time. That's your that's your window of opportunity to rush in and, and spam those daggers. Spam the guard button because your move will beat his recovery time. Your daggers will beat his recovery time every single time. So that's how you beat these guys with shields. Wait for him to make a big move. Basically they're doing a charge attack. And here's a stabby stabby in the back. That's why I had to get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. In this situation, um, as you can see, I forgot the Golden Rule. No shield, so use Blood Blade. I should just use Blood Blade on this guy. There 
Here we go, so now I'm back. Back in the saddle, doing the right thing. Backstab on this guy. And Bob's your uncle. I think he actually dropped something. There we go, so that's the Bridge of Sacrifice cleared. And here I'm just uh, playing hockey with this. <laughs> Actually, um, when you two hand your daggers, it does a kind of like a sweeping attack along the ground. So it's a good way normally to break open those uh, golden rune skulls. That time you just refuse to cooperate. All right, so bridge of sacrifice down and out. A little bit of strategy, a little bit of combat training. We are now going to go down to the Morning Star camp, so named because there is a Morning Star there. This is perfect for this build. It's a very important item. It's basically a strike weapon, and it will help you deal with miners. And it has bleed on it as well. Right now, if you go after miners with your daggers, your daggers are just going to bounce off them, and it's going to break your combo. Okay, so into this camp, you can do in all the dogs with one blood blade. Backstab this guy, and then you're gonna do a blood blade on that dog in the distance. I just love clearing this camp with this build, it's so much fun. And in here is the Morning Star. Perfect addition to this build. These guys, as long as you take them by surprise, these misbegotten, as long as you like, do relatively a sneak attack, um, you can one-shot them with the Blood Blade. If you alert them and they're coming at you, it's going to take two Blood Blades. So usually I dodge back right after doing a Blood Blade to avoid alerting any other misbegotten who are nearby. And that's it, that's it. It's like one shot each. And there's a group of three dogs around the troll there. Same dealio, if you're nice and quiet about it, you can one-shot all of them. With the blood blade. Blood blade, back up. Stay nice and quiet. There we go. And you know how to take down trolls, target his chest. Five or six blood blades, you're gonna get a bleed on the third or fourth one. Spam out that blood blade, two. There's your bleed. And if you get close enough, just spam daggers to finish them off. There you go. This is a great build, eh? This is a lot of fun. You're overpowered, Slack. Yeah, I know. I told you. <laughs> what did I tell you? That's what you want, right? Okay, onward and upward. Um, this is the mighty shot Ash of War. Right now we have the short bow. If you want to keep your equipment load low, grab this. Because you can slap this on your short bow, which weighs a lot less than uh, the long bow or the horn bow. You can stick with the short bow and just slap the mighty shot on it. Because Barrage, which is the, the short bow's default skill, is um, kind of situational. Alright, so, now for some heavy duty business, we're going to take on a Knight Boss here. The Knight's Cavalry, so you're going to wait till night time. He will drop the... I forget what it's called, the something flail, the Knight Rider's flail. Anyway, set all your flasks to... mostly to HP. So basically you have 5 red, 1 blue, and there he is. Now the deal with this guy is, you want to stick to his left side, you're going to keep pushing to your right, because he's weak. If you watch him, he's going to keep pushing to his left, trying to prevent you. And it's basically, blood blade all the way, and then when he gets close, roll to your right and blood blade. Just roll once, try to practice that, just roll once, and blood blade, and keep targeting the man. Roll once, blood blade. 
rinse and repeat this is a war of attrition keep flicking your joystick or your mouse up so that you're targeting the man not the horse you will take some hits and he will taxi sometimes see how he's, he continually pushes to the left to his left because he knows his weak spot his weak spot is on his left side so you gotta counter that roll to your right blood blade eventually you're gonna knock him off his horse if you continue to knock like to target the man you're gonna knock him off his horse and then you can do a critical hit while he's on the ground it's absolutely devastating watch this Drink up to refill your health. Keep see how he pushes to to his left because he knows his weak spot. He knows where he's weak. He's pushing to the left. All you have to do is counter that. Roll. There you go. Now we got him. There we go. Knock him out. Check out the massive hit he took from the critical hit. And do a charge attack, and that's it. 3400 runes, barricade shield, ash of war, and the knight rider flail. Which also does bleed damage. So that's another great backup weapon for this build. Now if you fail at this, um, your money's just going to be out there in the middle of the field. It'd be so easy to retrieve. So, you know, give it a try. And now I'm going to level up strength to 10 so that I can use the Beast Crest Heater Shield. And I'm going to slap the no skill Ash of War on it. It's a much better shield than the Bandit's default shield that has 100% physical damage negation. Done and done. Slap on that new shield. Now I just want to take a quick run down to get um, strike that. We're going to the Kalu Baptismal Church first. So you're going to head west from the site of grace, the Castlemore Rampart site of grace, up this path here. And we're going to get a sacred tier. We're going to collect uh, one, two, three sacred tiers. Because our health is now high enough that we're not getting the full benefit of refilling when we use our flask. So we want to kind of increase the amount that our flask refill. It's going to run in, spawn my wolves, and they ended up just like taking on the guy behind me instead of going out to the rats, but that's okay. You can one-shot these rats with Reduvia Blood Blade. I spawned my wolves in front of me and I expect them to go after the rats and instead they went after the guy behind me. But at least they're watching my back. <laughs> Wipe out all the rats. And there's a giant rat down there. He'll take two or three Blood Blades. Make sure you keep your distance. And Bob's your uncle. There, there's an example of two-handing the dagger and just, it does kind of like this sweeping attack on the ground when you just do a regular attack. This is a good way to bust open those glowing, those glowing skulls. Okay, so grab the sacred tear. We're good to go. Back to Castlemore Rampart. Now I just want to go quickly down to grab the map to map out Weeping Peninsula and get a golden seed. And then we're going to head off to west, the west side of Weeping Peninsula to get a sacred tier and make a quick bee dive to the Tombsbury Catacombs to get Grave Glover at 1 and Grave Glover at 2. There's the map. Backtrack up here. Watch out for the goal of shooting giant arrows at you. And double back here. 
up on the ledge and we're gonna go get the golden seed. Just follow my route up here, go to the left of the ruins, hop over this rock here and you get to dismount and just kind of duck behind this sloping rock here. That golem way off in the distance can't hit you. Here, wait for him to shoot and then go grab the golden seed and get the F out of dodge. Back to the north. Now normally when I do this I would stop off at the Castle Moor Rampart to um, reset the game so like get like the golem to stop shooting but it doesn't really matter. And now um, I'm just going to fast track the next part because it's pretty routine. I just want to gallop out to the west side of Weeping Peninsula. So follow this route here over the bridge. And all the way to the top of this hill. And this is the Church of Pilgrimage, if I, if I recall correctly. Church of the Pilgrimage? Church of Pilgrimage. Who the man? You the man, Slag, that's right. And grab yourself another sacred tier. And basically you're heading due south down the hill. I'm gonna make a quick stop at Tombsburg Catacombs. I'm not gonna like do it. Just drop in, grab a Grave Glover one and a Grave Glover two, and then just be on a merry way. So it's just dead ahead. See that kind of like that pillar there? It's right behind that pillar. Okay, tunes for catacombs. I'm not going to engage in any combat, we're just going to go straight down here, go to the left, hang a right at the bottom here, and you can circle, circle around counterclockwise, grab the Grape Lover at 1, and the Grape Lover at 2, and that's it, we are out of here. Retrace your steps, avoid the skeleton, he's there. He may throw a fire pot at you, but don't worry about it, it's no big deal. Okay, so now we have a Grave Glover 1 and 2. We can improve any Spirit Ash, any regular Spirit Ash, up to plus 2. Which Spirit Ash are you going to upgrade, Slack? Aha, that is the question, eh? I did tell you the name of this episode was is Blood Brothers, right? Therein lies the key to the mystery. Okay, it's so over here to discover this side of grace. And we're going to get one final stop here in Weeping Peninsula, off to the northwest there, to the, I believe it's the 4th Church of America. Straight up the hill here, you can see it right there in plain sight, that church right there. And we'll get a sacred tier there. At which point we'll be getting a lot of bang for our buck whenever we use our flask to refill their health. Okay, so here we go. Grab that sacred tear. Discover the sight of grace. Map out Weeping Peninsula. Back to the Third Church of America. And now we're going to go quickly grab Grave Glover 3, 4, and 5. And we got some some business with our flasks that so we can apply an extra charge and increase the amount that they are that they replenish. Take care of all that business. After that, hop through the window here to the northeast, you're going to find this hidden way gate in the ravine here. Strike that, I got a better idea. <laughs> Let's take the um, the spirit springs up here. Yeah, take this spirit spring all the way up. 
And there's another spirit spring up here. Don't forget to train it slowly and take another spirit spring. And there's a third spirit spring. And this will put us right up at the northeast corner of Limgrave. Right there. Okay. And you see that red stuff oozing out? That is the northwestern corner of Kaelid. Off to the left is a church. You want to avoid that because there's a, an invasion there that you may not want to do right there. Avoid that. It's not really part of our agenda and it's pretty hellacious so we don't need to do it now. Hop over this volcanic ro uh, wall and discover the site of grace here. Now basically we're going to go north towards the minor earth tree. Right there, too. basically towards the the big giant gigantic earth tree, with the minor earth tree right next to it. I want to find a branch here that we can hop onto right here, so give us a safe way to get down quickly. And there's also a rune arc there, right there, right next to that guy. So let's kill this guy with a blood blade. A little closer, slack. Grab the rune arc. Here is trying to get fancy and kill this guy with a, a fire pot. He got wise to me. Moved out of range. Because the game fed him some intel on what I was going to do. <laughs> game loves to cheat like that. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with this. Yeah, okay, there. I finally came to my senses. Yeah. And I'm just going to head down to the east. Stick to the right to avoid the putrid avatar there. He will just wipe his ass with you if you're not ready. And, um... Into this doorway here, which will lead us into the minor earth tree catacombs. Now we want to put on our best immune gear. Which would be all the traveler's gear that we got earlier on. So take off your, your chainmail armor and put on the traveler's hat, the perfumer's traveling garb, the traveler's gloves, and the traveler's slops. With all that on, you have pretty good immunity because we're going to be running through some scarlet rot at the bottom. Watch out for this imp here. He will give, a, give you a hard time unless you ambush him with some Reduvia blood blades. And take the elevator down. Make sure you're facing east. And we're just going to run down this hallway here. Grab a Grave Glove Word 4. Grab a Grave Glove Word 3 here. And go all the way to the end through the rod. This is why you need your um, Traveler's Gear. And get, grab a Grave Glove Word 5. Just go counterclockwise around the room to grab those two things. There you go. So now you have a Grave Glover. One, two, three, four, and five. All we need is the Spirit Ash that we're going to use those on. Off goes the Traveler's Garb and back goes on the Chainmail Armor Set which has better physical damage negation than much, much better than the Traveler's Gear. All right, one final stop before we take on Margaret the Fell. Margaret the Fell, Margaret the Fell, yes. Up to the main academy gate, which we discovered um, in part one. Part one or part two, I forget. Anyways, it's already discovered. At the main academy gate, turn to the southeast, and you're simply going to gallop down the hill here. There's a whole bunch of wolves on the way, just just ignore them, or kill them if you want. I'm just gonna ignore them. And you're looking for a merchant at the bottom of the hill. Here's the merchant. 
grab the Trina's Lily, and well, you're going to buy. How can I? Drum roll, please. The Fanged Imp Ashes. Cost you 2,000 runes. And I'm just going to cash in all the runes here. Have a safe. These Spirit Ashes inflict blood loss. Ah, ah, I see, said the blind man. Yeah, these guys are they are just a couple of maniacs. They're the typical um, fang, the imps that you encounter in catacombs, and now you've got them as your blood brothers. So now I just want to hustle up a little bit of cast so I can um, improve these guys. So over to Ferrum Greybridge. I <laughs> got that guy in mid, mid flight, that's great. And kill a few vulgar militiamen. On goes the Fang Dimp Ashes. I'm going to show you the uh, the item card here. These spirits are well suited to causing a disturbance. Da, 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 da. Doesn't say in the item card that they do blood damage or blood loss, but they will. All right, so now we have to get Rodrika as a spirit tuner. All you have to do is talk to Rodrika twice and the blacksmith twice. I'm still looking for my own purpose. Okay, so that's Rodrika once. Go over to the blacksmith, ask him about Rodrika, then go back to Rodrika, then back to the blacksmith, then rest at a site at the uh, round table site of Grace. Very good. Back to Rodrika. All of it. I'm still looking. Tell her what the blacksmith said. And if I do, I suppose I should try last. Certainly he does. I know he's trapped, I can tell. Back to the blacksmith. Back over no matter. Look up. Ask him about Rodrigo. Who stay with absurd? I refuse. I don't. Having done that, simply rest at the round table. Roger will now disappear from her place beside the fireplace and move to her new place of business here to set up shop as a spirit tuner. Now we can approve the fanged ambashes up to plus five. And there you have it, your blood brothers. Let's go take on Margaret the Fell. And here I'm just doing something that you should probably do as well if you're new to the game. Spend all your money on arrows, any remaining money on arrows. So that if you screw up the Margaret the Fell boss fight, you don't lose anything. Just use, you know, just lose a little, a little bit of chump change. All right, so oh, back to Stormhill Shack. We're simply going to gallop up the hill. Keeping an eye, an eye on the cliff side on your left, it's going to eventually slope down to meet the ground, right here. At this point you're going to hop up on it and double back along the edge of the cliff. Go to the very end, you're going to cut to the right, find a tunnel. You're going to go to the end, cut to the right, looking for a tunnel on the left. There's your tunnel. You get kicked off your horse, run straight up. If anybody follows you, whack him with some blood blades. Discover the Sight of Grace. And with the flasks, that would go maybe three and three. Three and four, sorry. What did I go with? Four and three, yeah. Four and three is... Three uh, flasks, FP flasks, is plenty. Once again, the Blood Blade is really, really cheap. And that's how you're going to beat him. Make sure you got your shield up. You don't need the um, 
the great knife in your left hand to go in with your shield and the Reduvia blood blade in your right hand. Out go your fanged ambashes, back up, let them engage, and then start spamming that blood blade at Margit. And he will bleed. There's a bleed already, see that? Because your blood brothers are also um, inflicting bleed, inflicting blood loss. Casey's into the second phase already. Roll through this. I missed. <laughs> no matter. Get close. Shoot that blood blade. This one I got. Whenever he does that, he jumps way up in the air. With the big hammer. Best thing to do is roll through at the peak of his jump. Tarnished, smoldering with thy meager flame. Cower in fear of the night. The hands of the fell omen. As you can see, the fanged ambashes fared really well. There's no reason to panic during this fight. Just keep your distance and guzzle those health flasks. Let the fanged imp ashes do all the heavy lifting and get in there and shoot some blood blades whenever you can. And don't forget to take a gold pickle foul foot. And that is it. That's it for part three. Take a bow there, bleed the freak. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, post a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. All right, see you next time. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.